the broad coalition that's come together in support of performance counts is that evaluations need to matter. You've got you know, a situation now where you know, there are teachers across the state who are doing their best. They're in the classroom every day, working hard, and they're not getting feedback. They're not getting the type of coaching that they need to, to be better. Uh, everyone needs um, effective evaluation and, and feedback. They're not getting it because evaluations aren't taken seriously. Uh, we want evaluations to matter in this state. We want layoff decisions, uh, tenure decisions, uh, to be based on performance, not just how long a teacher's been in the classroom. This is about treating teachers as the highly important skilled professionals that they are. Uh, and that's the thrust of performance counts, in addition to ensuring teachers stay in the classroom, that kids' learning time, which is so fundamentally important, is protected. How much of the, the current legislation, the current discussion, is aimed at the Chicago Teachers Union? Their collective bargaining agreement expires, I think, at the end of this year. Timing seems to matter in some of these proposals that are under consideration. If legislation isn't enacted this year, it may you may miss the window that the te Chicago teachers may renegotiate a contract, and then any of these proposed reforms may not matter. They may go on strike. How important is getting something done by May 30th, and how much of this deals with what is anticipated as a problem up in Chicago? The stakes are extremely high here. Every year of a student's life, and I'm a father of uh, two kindergarten students, so I speak from personal experience, every year in a student's life is absolutely critical. Kids get off track because they have an ineffective teacher. They may never get back on track. So every year matters. And, and so the urgency for us fundamentally is that uh, every child matters and every year matters and we want the best teachers in the classroom. In terms of some of the, the, the larger dynamics with regard to um, you know, Chicago, uh, it's a very difficult moment in Chicago in that um, you know, the district is going through a very tough financial time as other districts are around the state. Um, there's going to need to be a decision um, very soon around whether or not the district um, can pay teachers the 4% increase um, that was uh, part of the last contract. And let me be clear, Stanford Children supports higher salaries for teachers. Again, we think teachers should be uh, treated more like, like the high school professionals that they are. But if the district doesn't um, decide to uh, pay the 4%, that will reopen that contract in Chicago. And, and so there could be um, a, a teacher strike, which would be devastating to kids and families in the community as soon as the beginning of the school year. So in that particular circumstance, um, the stakes are extremely high, and it is urgent. But let me say um, something else about um, the, the way the process works in Chicago to the detriment of students, and that is because of the imbalance in the current way in which contracts are negotiated, the threat of a strike has been unfortunately used as a trump card to prevent key educational issues from being discussed and, and progress being uh, made. And, and the most prominent case in point is student learning time. Chicago has uh, one of the shortest school days in years of any urban district across the country. A student in Chicago who goes to school, in the, the K-12 um, in Chicago, goes to school for four years less than a student in Houston. Now, how can we expect students in Chicago to, to make it, to be ready for college and career, if they're going to school for four years less than students in other urban districts? It just isn't right. So, so who, who, who would decide that? Would that be, <clears throat> the state would say, it's 188 days, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., nobody gets out? Would it be a federal requirement? You're, you're going to have a lot of people who say, oh, I local control, I want my local people to, I don't want a yeah. big government telling me what I got to do. It, it, when, you, when you get down to it, who gets to, who gets to make that call? And it's, it's beyond that. It, it goes into curriculum and it, it, you start to get to some really detailed yeah. decisions and is that in the legislation? Is that part of the discussion? Our goal would be to have better balance in the contract negotiation process so that issues like learning time um, you know, uh, would be uh, issues that would be decided apart from the bargaining table. You know, we feel like the school day and year um, should be decided, uh, you know, uh, independent of bargaining. Um, and, uh, you know, you just have this situation where over time in Chicago, over and over again, uh, there's been a recognition of this huge problem. There's been an effort to increase the length of the day, and then that has gone nowhere. 
um, because of the threat of a strike. It happened in 2003. It happened in 2007. We can't continue to afford to kick the can down the road for kids in Chicago who are going to school for less than six hours a day, 170 days a year, getting four years less schooling over their K-12 career than students in other districts. That's just not right.